Hey guys and dolls, welcome back. Today I'm going to be sharing with you a tutorial using the Charlotte Tilbury Rebel Palette. I'm primarily using these two darker colors on the bottom. I didn't really use the grass green very much at all and I didn't use the shimmery highlight at all. I also used a little bit of the Naked Basics Palette, the original. I used some of the more neutral colors in here just to um, basically round out the whole eyeshadow. I feel like a smoky eye, particularly a colorful smoky eye, always looks best when it's grounded with a neutral. Of course you can do it without, um, but I do think that in terms of making the look a little more elegant. I do think using some neutrals and some mattes and things like that kind of rounds out the look. I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. If you do, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comment section down below. And without any further ado, I always say further ado. Oh, I feel like so Shakespearean every time I say that. But anyway, let's get started. <laughs> Okay, so I'm starting out with a naked face. I have nothing on, not even moisturizer. I'll go ahead and apply that after I've done the eyeshadow and remove the fallout with a makeup removing wipe and all that stuff that you'll see in a moment. Uh, but for now, I'm just finishing up filling in my eyebrows. I gave them a nice solid fill, nothing like over overdrawn really. I did kind of extend it a bit on the ends, which I will probably have to redraw on after I put on my face makeup and everything, but it gives me a nice framework to understand like where everything is going to be placed. I think doing the brows first is really, really important. I'm going to start out with the Lorac Behind the Scenes Eye Primer. And I'm just going to get a little squeeze of that out of my finger. So I went ahead and smoothed that on all over the whole lid, even though I'm going to be taking a pencil and putting it on the lower portion of the lid. I just want it, you know, smooth texture overall. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a black liner and I'm going to kind of draw a half moon shape over my eyelid. So what I'm going to do is first draw this on the lash line like that. And then I'm going to look up really hard and kind of like make a weird face. You see how that stamps it? It gives you a good idea of where to place the black shadow. So I'm going to place it almost like triangular, but it ends up looking rounded when the eye is open. This is the Rock and Coal from Charlotte Tilbury. The color is Bedroom Black. Next I'm going to take a stiff eyeshadow brush. This one's from Sonia Kashuk. And I'm just going to blend out the edges of that because I don't want them to be too harsh. And make sure the inner portion is nice and smooth. Don't worry if the blending out isn't perfect. We're going to cover it up with a whole bunch of eyeshadow anyway. You just don't want a harsh line for textural reasons. So see how it's almost triangular? But then when the eye is open, it just makes the eye look lifted. So for the eyeshadow today, I'm going to start out with... Oh my dear. I just realized I've had the fan on this entire time. I'm sorry if that's been kind of noisy for you guys. Now it's time to start to dip into the colors from the Charlotte Tilbury Rebel Palette. I'm going to start first with the Smoke Shade, which is a really beautiful metallic teal. And I'm going to place that, well it's not, it's like somewhere in between metallic and frosty, but whatever. That doesn't really matter. I'm going to place that all over that black eyeshadow, all over the entire lid. And when we get into the outer edge, I'm going to blend it a little bit, but we're going to come back with another brush and blend it, but I'm just taking this side of it to start to blur it out. Now I'm going to be taking a MAC 217, and I'm just going to fuzzy out those edges using a little bit of a circular motion. I'm not having to pick up any excess product, just blending away what's there. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dip into the Naked Basics palette. This is the original Naked Basics. I'm going to be picking up Faint, which is an ash-toned brown, meaning that it doesn't have a lot of red in it. That can be really great when you're doing a any kind of colorful smoky. I think it's great to have a neutral thrown in there. In this case, we're doing a more ash-toned neutral color. You could also use a warm tone neutral, which is what I did in my Midnight in Paris tutorial. I used a like a dual chromatic teal eyeshadow and then I used a warmer color in the crease to sort of warmth it up. I think it's really important to have a mix of textures. You just want to keep that nice and tight and rounded as we have here. If you want you can bring another blending brush in and just make the edges really really soft like really smoke it out to where it fades to almost nothing. That looks excellent. 
All right, and then I'm gonna come in with a highlight shade also from the Naked Basics palette. I'm gonna use Foxy, which is a yellow, which tends to go really nicely when you're using greens. And just place that right there. Share the love all over, blend it all around. And you see how by mixing that ash-toned brown with the teal, it almost gets like an olivey look to it, which is gonna go really great when we put the pop shade on the center of the lid. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and put the black liner on before I do the pop shade. And I'm just doing a line of black, stamping that on. This is the Urban Decay ink for eyes. Really, this look is so smoky, you can get away without doing liner at all. But I think that having that little bit of black right there at the lash line, A, it's gonna help to hide our lash band when we put on our falsies. But more importantly, I think it really punctuates the darkness of it and adds that little bit of depth. See the difference? Maybe not. I don't know. So now it's time to go ahead and apply the pop shade, which is this really great emerald olive with a gold glitter in it. And we're gonna pop it. <laughs> See the pun I did there? That was cheesy. Anyway, popping that right in the center portion of the lid, leaving the outer portions without it, is gonna make this center portion of the lid come forward. It's a great way to get an open eye effect, even when you're doing a smoky eye, which typically is thought to sort of close the eye off. This adds that light back into the eye. Additionally, this color, placing it here, changes the overall effect. It makes it so much more glamorous. It makes it a little bit greener as opposed to just teal. Gorgeous. The best part too is when you're using a glittery eyeshadow like this, the shimmer usually doesn't actually transfer to the eye. It usually just sort of falls out. This one actually transfers and it sticks around. It's amazing. <laughs> okay, so now it's time to go ahead and remove that fallout. I typically will do like the upper half of the eyelid and then remove the fallout, put on my face makeup, and then finish up with the bottom. So that's what I'm going to do today. Just taking a makeup wipe. I'm going to be very careful around this outer edge because I want to maintain that soft shape. I'm taking this CeraVe AM SPF 30. It's a really great moisturizer. Pour that all over. Now that my moisturizer's had a chance to set in, I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of the Benefit Professional, just in the areas where my pores seem to be a bit larger than I would like. So like my nose, I think it's always like a pretty popular place to put primer. Uh, definitely right here I got some definite pore action going on. Hot. For foundation today I'm going to be using my IT Cosmetics CC Cream Your Skin But Better. The shade that I use is Fair. I'm going to do just a little bit less than a full pump because I find when I do a full pump of this, it's actually too much product. So get that on my finger, share the love with my other finger, and then start dotting this on my face. And then blending it in. Highly scientific. Make sure you get it nice and evenly distributed because this is also supplying me with some sunscreen protection. Of course, I also have it from the other moisturizer, but it doesn't hurt to have more. Make sure I blend that into the hairline since my hair is back today. Next for concealer, I'm using a little bit of the MAC Select Cover Up in NW20 and the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer in NW15. Got that on a little palette here, and I'm gonna mix them together. So taking a flat brush, I apply it in sort of like a stripey triangular shape. See how it's like longer, shorter, shortest. Then I take a large domed brush like this and just blend it. This gives me a really nice lift at the same time that I'm hiding my under eye bags. Who doesn't love that? Extra, where I'm a little more blue. To set all of the foundation, I'm going to be using my MAC Mineralize Skin Finish Natural and a poof for MAC. Just press and roll that all over the skin. It's going to help to really set it up for success. It's going to hide pores. And who doesn't love that? What I like to do is come in with that same poof and just smooth it out. 
once it's already set. It's not going to disturb the finish. I'm just going to make it look nice and velvety and smooth. Okay, so for contour today, I'm actually going to use the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow. This ha <laughs> Can we talk about the packaging? Oh my god, it's so good. I can't hardly stand it. So the first one I'm going to use is the Sculpting Powder, and I'm going to be using it on, or rather, with a Charlotte Tilbury brush. I forget what the brush is called. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a... Oh, Powder and Sculpt. Well, there you go. So, I'm just using my little brush to do a little contour situation. I do notice that as far as a contour color goes, this is a bit warmer than what I normally use, but I think it's supposed to be universal. It's not meant necessarily for very, very fair skin. So, it doesn't look bad though. It doesn't look like overly warm. Like I've used some that I'm like, oh no, oh no. Whereas this looks almost like a blush contour hybrid. Next, I'm gonna pick up the highlight shade on the side of the brush. And I'm going to place that right here. Right, like a little C formation. It's very frosted, so use it sparingly if you're not into the shimmery look. I'm also going to take the tip of the brush and apply a little bit of it right here on my Cupid's bow. A little bit on the tip of my nose. My chin. And then for blush today, I'm going to be using Bliss from Makeup Geek and an F40 brush from Sigma. Play that on the apples in my cheeks and work it back. There's construction happening outside. <laughs> Sorry about the noise. I wanted to use a peach blush with this really great green eyeshadow look, especially with the smoky eye. I think a neutral blush or a peach blush always is a hit. It always looks perfect. It's going to go great with the lip color I've selected. So for my lower lash line, I'm going to take this Made to Last pencil from Jordana, and I'm going to very carefully draw that on my lash line. Make sure I also get this inner portion here. Do you see how when I just line it as it is naturally, you can see like a dip down where the tear or a, like it juts up where the tear duct is? I'm gonna fill that in a little bit so it has a little bit more of a smooth transition where instead of you know coming up for the tear duct. I'm gonna do the same here. You see, there's a little bit of a gap. And very delicately draw a little extra in the outer corner so that it'll have a smoother transition. Next, I'm going to take a q tip and just make that transition nice and smooth. So, blur it out a bit. For the inner rim, I'm going to use the Urban Decay Perversion pencil because I have good luck with this one in the waterline. Whereas the bedroom black, to me, it always transfers to my contacts in the worst way possible. Whereas perversion actually works pretty well for me. You can take a little teeny tiny brush if you need to, with a little bit of the smoke shade. Right here in the outer corner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to blend that over the shadows on the, or the liner on the bottom. Next order of business is to put a little bit of mascara on my bottom lashes with the Clinique High Impact Curling Mascara. I'm gonna give my lashes a really quick quick curl, nothing too specific. I just don't want them drooping down. Then I'm just going to apply a little mascara on them as well just to make sure they're good and black and not blonde. But we're going to be using some pretty awesome lashes today. Lashes today, I'm going to be using a pair from Sugar Pill. This is the Toxic Lash. Pretty exciting. They have a nice really cool flare to them. And they have both green and purple hairs as well as black. So they're really quite interesting. And then to apply these, I'm going to be using the Duo Lash Adhesive with Vitamins. This is a really good lash glue if you're allergic to latex. 
And honestly, I, I mean, I'm not, and I just prefer this. I think that it works better than the latex-based one, or it's very rubbery, and I find that if my if I cry or just, you know, allergies or whatever, if my lash band gets wet at all, I find that with the traditional duo glue, it just comes right off and it's such a pain. Whereas with this, I feel like it lasts a little bit longer, but it is a little more difficult to remove because it's a little, you know, a little more stuck on there. So I'm just bending the lash band because it's a little bit of a stiff band. You want to make sure it's nice and rounded so when it goes on, it'll fall into shape easily. And once that glue starts to look a little bit on the whitish side or it starts to look a little bit more clear, you're good to go. Go ahead and apply it. So go ahead and place them in the center first. Place it on the outer corner. Take the back of your tweezers to press them on. So now that my lashes are on, I'm just going to revamp my brows a little bit. Fill them in a bit more. Bring them back to life and also extend that tail again. And then I'm going to go ahead and seal them in with some brow gel. This is from Milani. It doesn't really matter what brow gel you use. You know, I found some that were pretty exceptional, but, I mean, it's always, at the end of the day, it's always just brow gel, you know? You know? For lips today, I'm going to go ahead and start with a lip primer. This one's from NYX. I am just now testing it out, so I don't have any comments on it, really. Let's just apply that all over the lip. Then I'm going to apply Bitch Perfect Lipstick from Charlotte Tilbury. Seriously, can we talk about it? I just want a little bit of a liner, so I'm picking up Naked from Urban Decay. I hope you guys enjoyed this look. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and I will see you guys in my next video. Remember to just be yourself. See you, bye.